Okay, so there's one question that people are saying about magicians. I'm here to answer you guys' questions. As it is, what question is it this evening? Uh, I'd like to uh, present to you what should you know as a magician. Okay, so what should you know about being a magician? One thing that comes to my mind is the magic. Let's take a look into my hat. All the way in. Do you see anything inside of this hat? Okay, so you can just reach into my hat. Watch. One. Two. Three souls from my hat. Okay, now's the time that I'm going to reveal what you should practice as a magician. Here are the first ones up. But first, let me put my hat away. Okay, so you want to be a magician that does tricks, illusions, and much more. Well, as it is, there is things that you need to um, learn, but also to um, take into consideration on practicing. Because practicing makes perfect in, in every route of a mag magician has to have at least a lot of practice getting annoying their tricks and so on as it is now I'm gonna get our, our get our first one up right now here's number one number one and that is timing timing is crucial in practicing for magic because timing is all about the, the uh, timing what it takes in tricks as it is in, um, do, in, in, in doing production as well. Timing is number one thing that you need to um, practice in not just becoming a magician, but also pra in practices of being a magician. And now for our second one. Number two. And that is performance. Um, practicing your performance so you know how um, to do the show as well as um, things that you need in performance wise as well as your um, perfect professional state in performance as well too. Because performance is the second mandatory thing that you need to practice as a magician. And that is as uh, being a part as the role of a magician as well too. And which brings us to our th third one. Number three. Which is the execution. Now the execution is the third one of the mentory uh, things that you should practice. And that is executing your tricks. Um, executing. Um, how you're gonna, gonna deliver the show. As well as in trick rehearsals. Execution is the top third one of the mandatory things that you need to practice as a magician. Which um, m makes our way down at num number four. Number four. And that is delivery. And the, our, uh, our fourth mandatory one, um, that is the must to have um, in practicing as a mag magician, because delivery is all about, besides as the performance, um, 
and a form of execution of the show and tricks. Delivery is presenting your tricks and your showcase and your performance as well too. Because they both go in hand, hand in hand to enriching your shows and enriching who you are as a musician. So delivery is, you know, is um, the fourth mandatory one that you should practice as a musician. And that one there now brings us to our fifth one. Number five. And that is the angling. Angling is another uh, one of the mantra ones. It's the fifth one because angling is how to like orchestrate the trick and how to utilize it so that way um, as you're doing the trick um, it will also help with uh, shadowing and delighting as well because ang angling is a stance in a way that they only get to see most of you and the rest of you is kind of tucked behind which is what you should know about because in there is going to increase your shows let alone help you in your tricks in your shows as well here's an example for this one I'm gonna use my lighter for this example okay so here's what will angling takes a place so you can see this lighter that I hold in my hand here if I could actually take this lighter here like this you can see here so you can see you can see you can see this hand here so if I could actually just um, show you my hand here and I got this lighter in watch I'm gonna hold it steady <sighs> completely vanishes. Okay, so where was the angling? I will show you. Let's take a look with the camera behind. So you guys can get to see that behind look of that angle. Okay, so this is me in the front. Okay, to make this vanish, I did it like this. Okay, like that. So here's where the ang angling is. I was over here my side was over here. The lighter is going into here. I'm slightly tilted like this at the waist, like this. And I slip this in very quickly into my pocket, like that. And then from here, I make it vanish. So that's what um, the back looks like. The front will look like as all tricks look like. So you'll look like this. Okay. So again, here's what you'll look like. So right there is an example of angling. Angling is important for um, con con concealing in into vanishes, into appearing. Um, it's a unique way. It's um, um, a very st stylish stance that can allow you to do many things in that too. But also is one of those mentally ones that you have to practice as a magician. And that brings us down to our sixth one. Number six. And that is postures. Postures is everything. And especially in performance and in angling as well too. Postures help with the, uh, 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 with the flow of the show as well as the helping the tricks as well. Here's an example of some postures. Like this. P -p Posture one. Posture two. 
Cluster 3. Posture 4. And now with the angling involved. Angle. At a posture. And presenting a hat is that same thing too. I'll show you with my hat. But first, I need my hat back. Okay, now I'll show you what I mean with the hat. I guess you want to be straight in the waist. Shoulders up, look, pr look proud as you are presenting it. Like the hat. Do that one. You can do that. So there's some postures for you there, even at a coil. Even a postures as in for trying to get something out of your hat by going like this. That again. So right there is an example of postures and angling involved in that too. The postures coincide with angling. And that's another one that you should be practicing as well, which is your postures. And postures, make sure you get them down packed. So here's another mandatory one that also needs, needs to be practiced as well. That's um, making its way at number seven. Number seven. And that also is a mandatory one that you need to know and fully know because it involves doing something, an action that needs to be practiced. Every magician needs to practice this, including starter magicians as well too. And that is ditches. Ditches is ditching certain things that are being performed as tricks. Um, and it's another thing that you should be practicing because practicing, it coincides with elevating and helping your tricks as well too. So this is, is actually the seventh mandatory one that you need to practice as a musician. Okay, here's another one of those big mandatory ones that's making its way on the list at number at number eight. And that is number eight, which is palm, which is palming. P palming is you know, one of those things that needs to be practiced even more, because everything's all in the hands of a magician. So making sure that your hands are all warmed up, because a palming is another one of those things that you should be practicing as well too. Uh, as it is, uh, palming. For those that don't know what palming is, probably you, many of you guys know, it's all involved within the hand palm, like you see here. Any objects like coins, sponge balls, and other things that can fit into the palm of your hand, like this, is an example of what I mean. Okay, so here, you're making sure that they're nice and loose, like you got your silks and your sponge balls. Okay. Now, uh, these sponge balls can actually go into your palm of your hand like this. This is what I mean by palming, like this. Also known as retention. Palming is also known as retention. Again, like this. So all that fits into the palm is palming. Also, you can do it with silks as well, too. You can see, because cause silks are very foldable, very squishy. You just put it down here. You can see it also palms very nicely like this. And here's a little trick that's involving palming as well. Okay, so you can see here, palms into here. You can see here, 
here was. And right there. So that right there gives, gives you an example of um, palming things that fit in the hand that can be easily fit in the hand, even smaller objects just like this. And that's involved with your wallet and in the inside of it are some other mandatory things that um, musicians need to work with involving palming as well. And that is coins. I'll take out one. You can see how easy it is to palm this. And again, look. It folds nicely like that. Right there. A palming. Here's a trick involving that as well too. Okay. I'll show you, you that right now. So you can you can you can see this here. Here. I'm gonna put this into his hand. Watch. Okay, he's gonna rub that. Very nicely. Watch. So, right there, uh, oh, palming is a crucial thing in um, pra practices for musicians. So again, making sure you're you're practicing those ones, in including the palming, because that is also a crucial part as well. And that brings us to our ninth, to our ninth one, number nine. And that is the procedures and the steps. Everything has procedures and everything has steps as well. Including in the performance, in your tricks, they all have procedures and steps that you have to follow. That um, is a part of practice and practicing as well too, so that way you get to nail your procedures and your steps, uh, making sure that you are paying attention to them as well too, because they'll um, keep moving you forward in the your shows as well. But procedures and steps is also the ninth uh, mandatory one that you need to practice as a musician. And that brings us to our tenth one, which is um, one that you should know, um, that you should be practicing as well. So here is our tenth one that you should be practicing. Number ten. And that is reps. Now, reps are also important as well, too. Not quite ma a mandatory, but also it needs to be practiced as well. Reps means repetitions. Rep repetitions of a trick, of uh, the procedures and steps, and how many times in order to nail it and get it firmed up as to lock in your, 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 your uh, set down, because um, reps is, is a, a, a no one that needs to be practiced as well. That way, your timing is met. And that brings us down to our 11th one, which is uh, one thing I think you should also know that's involved in rate. And that, um, and that is one of the, the other things that you should be, be, be practicing. And that comes in at number 11. And that is speed. Speed is being fluid being with the flow, making sure things are speedy, dickety split, because when you're doing tricks, you want to make, you want, want to make sure that um, you be, uh, that you're really speedy at it, um, 
making sure that it has a lot of um, fluid motion into it. That way you will get um, the illusions you're looking for and um, your good results in your tricks. Because speed right there is another one that you should uh, practice and it also will help you with your performance as well. Okay, for our twelfth one, involves two things that you have. Eyes and hands. And that makes its way on here that should be, be practiced in as our number twelfth one, and that is number twelve. Hand eye coordination. And so why is that important that you should practice that? Because there's certain tricks that involve hand and eye coordination. Here's an example on the picture using hands and eyes. And that right there gives us the title hand eye co coordination. Because what you see and what your hands touch are those tricks that are going to push you far in your magic shows. And from there, uh, down we go to our thir our uh, our thirteenth one, which is number thirteen. Continuity. Now, continuity is mandatory as well. It's just the same. Whereas the other ones that I've mentioned from the up top. Why continuity? Things need to be f be a fluid. And that goes into speed as well too. They both go hand in hand with all that as well too. Because continuity is a part of a magic show. Especially when doing tricks and illusions. Everything has to move with the flow. Okay, and another a big one that you should be practicing, besides us being practicing your continuity and your hand eye coordination, and that is um, something that you have to be careful about when you are speaking. I'm speaking. Right? It's all in the voice. And that's another thing that you should, you should practice, and that's uh, coming in at our 14th one. Number 14. Which is speech. Because speech is very crucial in doing a show. Making sure that you are talking nice and clear. Uh, that way people can understand you. Um, as well as to get your voice level up. So when you act excited, your voice needs to be excited as well. right? So practicing speech um, also help your performance as well too. Uh, speech also needs to be a par. Uh, so there's ways you can practice it by doing your vowels, A, I, O, U, and stretching your mouth. And also you can go to a microphone and practicing on there. And um, also finding words that you want to describe and describe it. Because the more you practice your voice, the the more it will sound very exciting, very powerful, because your voice is boisterous. It comes out boom, boom, boom. You want it to rain. And that's what's going to make an impact in your magic shows. And that's, and that's uh, another mandatory thing, which is practicing your speech and how you're going to talk to the audience. Okay, for our next one, which um, appears at number 15. Number 15. And that is acting. Acting is another important thing because it involves telling a story with your body, getting into the tricks, and just making it like a live story. So you make it like a plot, and you act upon it. So giving... An, an act, also uh, spicing up your show, make it more great, but also, it also um, 
makes you um, unique in a sense. So, so acting, uh, practice, practicing acting is no one thing that you should think about in doing a magic show. And the same goes for miming as well too. Like miming as if something's there like this. Something, something like that, right there. Miming is another form of acting as well. It's more silent, but also can impact a really good thing into your magic shows. And that brings us down to our 16th one, and that is developing the look. Number 16. And that is either if you want to wear a uh, yeah, suit jacket, red shirt, and a tie, or anything that would best suit you, and just an overall look in your show, uh, making sure that gets developed and needs to get practiced because that right there is going to um, um, make that show and give it and give it character. It's developing the look of the show and the look of you dressing the part as a magician. So developing the look is one of those mandatory ones that you also need to practice as a magician. Here's an example of one of the looks that you see right here. Here's another look. And another look that you'll see here in this pick. Even the look of the stage that you're going to do tricks as well, you can see it here in this pick. You can see there's the posture. Um, presenting the trick. Okay, so here's our 17th one, which is the, the patterns. Why well, pay attention to the patterns? Because everything besides this has steps and procedures. The patterns is completely opposite, but in that same kind of sequence. It is actually broken down into what you call sections and how they um, work with your magic show, and that is how things differ at different objects, different um, stuff like that. You need to know all that stuff, and also you need to practice that as well too. That way you get to know um, the patterns within your tricks as it is in your show. Number 17. And now for our next one, which is at number 18, and that is uh, storytelling. Storytelling is, t uh, is telling what it is. Like giving it a plot. You know, something that they can look into and uh, get to get that feel. Let them dream. And let them fly on. And just uh, that way, um, it's, like t it's, like t it's like telling a story. With your magic, you're letting the magic make a magical story for them. A magical journey story that will absolutely make them really exci excited. So again, practicing s storytelling is another thing that you should be practicing as a magician. And that takes us to our last one, which is a presentation. Presentation is everything in your sets, in your acting, in your stances, in your postures, uh, just like um, like like setting a plate up to the chef. Hey, chef, can you judge my dish? You want to you want to pre present it? It's you on the plate, right? So you're making sure that is good. A par, good to eat, good to taste. That on a magic, you want to make sure that you uh, present it the way it should, and give it out with all of your heart. Because presentation is everything, including in magic as well too. And that's another thing that you should practice as a ma ma magician. And I will say it again: that is 
presentation. Okay, so just um, and, and the things that you need to practice on from numbers 1 to 19, I'll be putting that in the uh, description box so you guys can get to know, as well as the, as the headings in the two, so that way you guys get to see what it is that is involved in practicing, uh, what you should practice as a magician. As this time now is to give you guys some tips. Tip. Time. Okay, so here I've got my book here on the tips that I want to share with you. Okay, tip number one, which is practicing on the tricks for the show. So you want to make sure you practice uh, that so you get it down packed and lock it in place. Uh, the second one, uh, tip, which is... Ready... Th th through on... Okay, excuse me for that one, guys. The, um, the second one is read through your instructions, including in your tricks. Reading in your instructions is mandatory because that way, in there, you get to, um, get your tricks down packed that you're going to be using for the show. For the third one, which is um, practice through the eyes of a, of, uh, a camera, like um, doing a... a uh, a video as well as through the mirror so you can get to see how well you are practicing as well as your postures and etc and how you are doing the, the trick best bet is to do one in, in the mirror as well as on the on a camera that you're about to see right now just like this in this pic that I'm holding up to the camera So making sure you get yourself a well trusted uh, camera, you, you can use a phone and just look back. Though here's the little, uh, little thing that I do uh, before doing tricks um, for um, stuff like that. Before I do uh, shows, I make sure I film what I'm doing first and uh, look. I look at it so I can improve upon. That is another thing you should do is look at it and work from it and improve your skills. Uh, so that's a, a good reason why you should have those two eyes right there, the mirror and the camera. That way you get to see what is going on and what the audience gets to see. Okay, for our uh, next one, which is getting to know your tricks. Making sure that you get to know your tricks and have good communication with them. Um, also the ones that you need to know uh, to go with your shows all too. That one that you, uh, that you, need, that you need, need to know in tips, and that is uh, getting on an e-page, your name out, getting your name out and promoting it. As well as the developing your practices, making sure you devote time to your practices um, in order to nail each or one of them. Um, and that one is doing a dress and stage rehearsal, like getting your outfit, um, timing, that as well as uh, getting your stage set up so you know it's going to go on the stage as well too. So, so that way there is nothing that uh, you need to practice that alone as a good helpful tip for you guys. Another one, uh, tip that you um, also will probably um, need to know uh, that I wanted to uh, share with you guys and that is um, looking the part of the show like again the, the look of the show, developing that look of the show. That's not a thing that I'm um, going to say true to your practices. Let alone making sure that there is the one thing, the thing you should think about is uh, is the look of the part of the show and you as well too. No one is uh, getting more research like books and good books. Next coming up video, I'm just showing you some good books that you, that, uh, that you'll need as a magician coming straight up. Uh, so I don't forget to uh, watch that one when it, when it comes up. I'll be putting that he on here onto my channel as well. And that one um, is uh, getting um, sites and outreach stuff. That way um, you can get outreach to other musicians as well too. Um, doing that as well too. That one is getting some constructive criticism. It, it, it betters you. 
um, and well as um, doing tricks, coming up to a person, doing tricks. You know, they'll probably give you tips and pointers on uh, what to do and uh, stuff, stuff like that. It'll better you and better your performance and better you as a um, musician as well. Another one, which is um, getting to a university, a school of magic. Honestly, I don't mean that kind of school of magic. I'm in one of these. Like going to an academy, um, magic arts. No, that's what I'm talking about. Schools. Making sure that you go into schools and uh, magic camps as well, too. That way, uh, they get to teach you. Um, and from there, you could uh, grow and be that strong magician that you're that you're longing, longing to be. And it's always good to get some education in that field of magic as well too. And it also helps if, if you have a history of family that happens to be a magician or someone that, that um, is really well into magic that they can also teach you as well too. So right there you, you can get some really good education. You can also find education like that online as well too. Let alone going to a college or a university that does magic tricks and um, that way you get taught right there. So that right there is um, some of the uh, tips right there. So getting some education is a really great thing in order, order to become what you want to become. Another one which is um, getting more like besides his books and research and constructive criticism, which is what we all need. It builds us and it strengthens us, as well as musicians too. Constructive criticism goes a long way in building a strong magician. Same with, uh, besides going to a school, which I just mentioned, and that brings us to our last one, and that is getting out there and getting more experience, like doing more magic shows. So there's all the tips. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you, um, this video inspired you, um, and also to help you as well too. Because for, for for those who want to become magicians, they also can get to, uh, to, uh, to hear, hear at this. And those who are magicians that want to 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 know, besides as the things to be practicing on, let alone some very very good helpful tips to help you with you and your magic shows. This is yours from yours truly, Ray Snabo. It's a fun evening and uh, enjoy the rest of this video. Don't forget to like, don't forget to share, and uh, don't forget to subscribe, because when you subscribe, you're going to be seeing some pretty amazing videos on here as well too, including very helpful ones, just like this one here. And that um, is the one that I'm going to, sh to Read out the title too, and that is what should you practice as as a magician. So that is the end of the uh, video. Uh, I'll be back for more amazing uh, videos coming up pretty soon. We'll be getting into St. Patrick's Day. Can't wait. So as it is, now it's the time to leave you guys to it. Peace out, and also live long and prosper.